Thank you for coming. Um, as I, I don't know if you read my Instagram profile, maybe you did. I asked you guys to come and I said that I would probably cry a lot. So maybe that's gonna happen. <laughs> if that does happen, uh, please don't feel like awkward. Like I just cry a lot, like it's normal. So anyway. Okay, well, you know, it's totally fine if you cry um, because this book is all about what to do with your emotional life. Yes. So if you sat up here and you were a total robot, I think people would be very surprised. Yes, yes, definitely it's a good sign that I cry a lot, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. So let's, let's, we'll tell you guys what's going to happen, okay? So I am a Colombian girl, just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Irish, I'm an immigrant here to New York. I moved here five years ago. And I really responded so well to your work. I saw um, Amalia on Instagram. Do you guys follow her on Instagram? Yeah, she's so funny and so brilliant. And really, a lot of her feelings resonate with my own feelings, even though we are thousands of miles away and have such different life experience. That happened to me with your book, too. So it's amazing. Maybe we're twin sisters. I don't know. Like maybe in we're a, twin yeah. sisters. I'm adopted, so maybe we were separated at birth. Oh, my like, God. You know, when I was growing up, there was this uh, Nickelodeon series called Sister, Sister. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the opening, like, I have no idea how to say it. There's many words I'm not going to know how to say in English, so you guys are going to help me. But <laughs> the opening, like, series, it was like, one girl was walking down the street and then she like just came up and another girl looking just like her yeah. came up and in the in the screen it says like sister sister and i was like waiting my whole life for this to happen oh. to me i'm still hoping it happens but yeah so maybe we are so i want people to know like the instinct behind this particular book and can you just say what made you s gather up all of these thoughts and feelings and what was the cohesive idea behind the book? That is a really good question <laughs> because to the day I see the book and it wonders me a lot that it makes sense and yeah I say this and I love Meg, Meg is my editor, thank you for believing in this book, it means the world to me, this is my dream come true, so thank you. Meg, uh, can you give the please row. the biggest yeah. applause to Meg, she is the best, like, I'm gonna tell you the story, we have a, a, a very special story about how this book came, came to exist no, she is not the lady who broke up with you no okay. <laughs> good she's definitely not the lady who broke up with me thank thank lord <laughs> um but it's it's a weird book i mean it's a book that has uh drawings but it's also a book that has like personal essays mm -hmm. it's a book that has fiction in it then it has recipes and like, that's crazy. Like, if you go pitch this story to an editor, it's like, hey, I, I have never published before, but this is a really crazy uh, book, and I, I want to talk about heartbreak. I'm really not, not an expert. I mean, I don't have a degree on psychology, although I did a very uh, serious, like, uh, like research. Yeah. Uh, but can you pl please publish this? I, I mean, as an editor, I think I would say, like, no, this is crazy. Recipes? What are you thinking about? So... <laughs> It's really nice to me and it surprises me every time how it really does, like when writing, and I don't know if this happens to you, mm -hmm. there's magic. Yeah. And Not it sounds, always, but sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it sounds corny, but it is true. I think there's magic in this book uh, and all those things, weird things, uh, get to live together and in such harmony. Yeah. And I don't know is, if it's because... It came from a place of true, like, you know, mending, like, or I don't know, like. Yeah, well, when I saw the book, I kind of thought, this is a creative person's honest response to having a big emotional shift happen. Yes. And you're so creative and you're really good at a lot of different things. Like you studied literature, but you also have been drawing like since you were a child, yes, maybe. Yes. So then this thing happened to you, which was this breakup, and then all the things have, who here has been through a breakup? 
Almost, oh I my God, there are everybody. lucky ladies out there that are not raising their hands. I want to be you. <laughs> you Maybe are so tonight. lucky. Maybe it will happen And thank tonight. you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, <laughs> some girl is sitting there like you should put your hand up because tonight you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna. so when I saw the book I thought it made sense actually that like you know all of these different elements because that's what happens we have you know we want to eat different food we maybe want to you have a very good interactive kind of a how to know when you're depressed yeah. and you have your own signals and then for the for the reader which i think is so generous and lovely you can write in how you know your own signs about being depressed and so that's you know where did that idea come from it feels like you're in somebody else's diary but it's your diary too so where did thank you get you. that thank you that's idea? exactly what i wanted to do thank you mm. i mean it's not the same for everyone uh, yeah. going through grief losing someone Either it's your the love of your life or your pet or your aunt or your grandmother. It is so hard. And I think that books out there were so stiff. Mm. They were giving like a formula. They were like, oh, just do this. And every one of you is going to be okay. Like, hey, no, that's not going to happen. Like, I don't need to be really smart to know that. Like, yeah. I feel very differently from how you feel. Yeah. And so... It came from an honest place of, I think we underestimate heartbreak. Yeah. Yes, even though it's very heavily on pop culture and even though it's in almost every Beyonce song, when I say mm -hmm. Beyonce, you all say amen, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, in every Beyonce song, uh, amen. thank you. <laughs> and, uh, we underestimate it because, and, and I think the whole point of the book really actually is, although it's like a light, maybe it could be a light reading and it's gonna make you feel good with yourself mm -hmm. and it's supposed to make you laugh. It's a book about how we relate to love, how we conceive romantic love and how it has made us like really awful people because <laughs> We, romantic love is, is awful. I mean, romantic love is all about um, possessing the other mm -hmm. or also feeling like the other needs to complete you. Yeah. So if we have the wrong idea about love, how is heartbreak not, not supposed to feel like the end of the world? And you know what I love? There's this one part, and living in America, you don't really hear that this much, where um, I marked it, it's basically, it's okay not to be okay. Yes. It's okay not to be okay. That's my like mojo in life. I love that. Yes, it is. Because usually it's very much, I, I don't know if you guys get this, but it's like, okay, come on, you're fine. Like, keep going, like, keep working, keep, you know, push through. That is crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I literally think, and if I ever, I don't know, maybe I can become a, a senator one day. I don't know what's... <laughs> What's in there? After Alexandra yes. Ocasio Cortez, we all want to be senators. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I really, really want to become a senator now. Not that I can anyway, <laughs> because I'm not American. But anyway, if Alexandria is watching this, Alexandria, I love you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. Anyway, uh, no, but really, like, heartbreak is serious. That is mental health issue. Mm -hmm. We live this, and I, I was sick. I wrote this book because I had to go to rehab for love. That is not okay, you know? Like, I called to the rehab center and I was like, look, I don't know what to say. I've never had a drink in my life. I've never tried drugs. And they were like, lady, this is a rehab center. <laughs> what are you doing? And I was like, I cannot stay in my house. Aww, like, going yeah. one day per week to the therapist is not gonna do it for me. Yeah. Like, I need to go to a place. Like, I need to be alone. Or, or I'm gonna kill, my, like, I don't know, it was really hard, you know? So coming from that place, and this is something that I love about your work, where that feels to me like a pure tragedy, right? Yes, so yes. You say, like, you're having really depressed thoughts and you're not able to be alone, and it sounds so scary. And where did you then make a book that manages to be funny and full of life? And I want to talk to you about that blend of tragedy and comedy. 
that I find really interesting. That is really interesting because you are a gr great comedy person. Uh, you tell me. And I'm a murderer. No. <laughs> <laughs> See? I don't know I'm how not. she did that. I'm not, officer. <laughs> you can step down. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I haven't studied comedy a lot. I am not a comedian myself, although I think some, like, my inner child probably is. Yes. Uh, yeah, and this you. is funny. There's thank a lot you. of really funny thank parts you. in this. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, I don't know, jokes and being funny is how I handle really sad stuff. I, do you think that's anything to do with being Colombian? It has everything to do with being Colombian. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, it has everything yeah. to do with being Colombian because growing up was so hard, so sad. Mm -hmm. so difficult so weird also it, it, it wasn't like the most it, it was amazing I mean growing up Colombian Colombia is the best place to grow up even if there was a war and Pablo Escobar could come to your house like it made like it for, for dinner <laughs> he would, no, he no, no 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 for dinner no my <laughs> my father would be very no no like I always I felt know. like, yes, thank you for, <laughs> no, he, he wouldn't come for dinner. Like, um, I always felt like he could enter, like break wow. into my house and steal the stuff of my mother, which was like nothing. Of course, he was not going to do that. Oh. But he was a mean guy for me. All the mean guys looked like Pablo Escobar. Mm. Um, I mean, it's like growing up with a real... Boogeyman. What? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank wow. you. It's growing up with the real boogeyman right there in TV and on, I don't know, like there were posters of him mm -hmm. and really crazy stuff happened. Like I was remembering the other day with my friends and I was, hey, do you remember that time? Like Pablo Escobar, the government was trying to capture him and then send him to the US. Right. And then he ally with other uh, drug lords and created a big cartel made by num n like numerous cartels, like the Cali cartel. You all know this because you have watched Narcos. I haven't, but <laughs> anyway. And you're you, you probably get it right, I don't, but yes, you know what I'm saying. Anyway. And you come from Cali. Yes. Yes, I come from Cali. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Other Cali. Oh, look at them. Yes. There's more Cali heads here. And we don't too. get happy when we talk about the Cali cartel. No, that no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and th there was this really weird thing where they they created like a group and they made helicopters fly through the cities and they and and like papers were thrown through all the city with letters to the country. So imagine right. this, you are a kid and you're outside in the streets and then papers start flying down the mm. sky and then you pick up the paper and it's a letter from Pablo Escobar. <laughs> like, that is weird, man. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Uh, so yes, we so, need to... So to, to deal with that sort of violence that you are maybe see secondhand do you think you develop this sense of humor then yes. when dealing with difficult things? Exactly that happened. Mm. To dealing with difficult things, I think I just made fun of them in, yeah. I don't know why. What? It, the, the, it, I always think about this too. It's does it happen to, to you like that too? Yeah, like, I mean, I think it's kind of um, a way to feel like uh, powerful. Yes. If you can laugh at something that's really sad or painful, then you have some control over that, I think. Yes, it's At true. least it feels that way. Yes. Um, and because I'm Irish and in Ireland, definitely. There was some violence. There was some violence. Now, not in, uh, to that Yes, level. you are not from the side <laughs> of, yeah, I no, know, I'm I remember this. No, I'm from the south this. and everything. Yes. And we definitely <laughs> didn't have the money for helicopters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. You know what was really weird? I was back in Cali just these holidays. This is mm -hmm. amazing. Like, Colombia never ceases to amaze, um, amaze me. There was a helicopter with carols, really, like, really, really loud carols singing really? through all the city. 
It's weird. I was like, <laughs> what are they doing with my taxes? Why is there a helicopter putting carols out there and the burrito sabanero? And I was like, don't do this, please. But yes. So can I ask about, um, you, you write about things like, you know, that are very personal, very intimate. And also I think from, from reading it, like I said, I got almost a diary feeling. So I felt like I knew you. We'd never met before, but I felt like I knew you. And so how, what is that like for you as an artist and as a person when people, you know, come up and share with you or when they think they have this insight into you or they do have their insight? They do have it, yes. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Like I was reading the other day, The Art of Memoir by oh, nice. Mary Vincent. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then... She's Marie really Kondo? great at it. Yes. Marie Kondo? M Mary Carr, yes. And <laughs> she's amazing. That's a really There's so many <laughs> publishing people here <laughs> that are like <laughs> <laughs> And she's very committed to being honest. Right, and right. yeah, and I have ne ne never read uh well her book before. Her books I have read but not like when she theorizes about mm. writing something that is personal. Mm. And to me, it felt like I needed to be truthful in order for me to heal, mm -hmm. because this book, it's also a way for me to heal my own heartbreak and for people to connect. Like, I think, I don't know if this happens to you because I love your book. It's very funny, extremely funny. You're gonna probably choke. You need to read it next to someone. It's dangerous. Just in case, yes, it's really dangerous. dangerous. You need to read it next to someone <laughs> because they're gonna need to slap you. <laughs> Thank you, Valia. No, no, it's true. <laughs> My girlfriend is here. She can't prove okay, good. this. <laughs> okay. um, but also sometimes it's very moving and personal yeah. and serious and I like that. And I think there's a selfishness, like when you're writing, there's a point when you, I think you you can say, I can make this pretty, mm. or am I, uh, is this helping me? Like, am I writing this because I wanna get better? And in that case, that is my case. Mm. So sometimes I am like, maybe I have no idea if this will, like people with, will connect to this. Yeah. I, I forget about the reader and it's really about healing myself <laughs> writing do is a place for me where i find myself and where i heal and it's weird because so many writers say this like oh writing is so essential mm -hmm. i would die if mm -hmm. a day passed by and i don't write who are you be doing an impression of <laughs> <laughs> You tell me, isn't it obvious? I feel like Jennifer Aniston. Yes! <laughs> I do a great Jennifer Aniston, right? No? <laughs> yes. Thank you. So, so they're saying, and is that the way you do feel? But that do is, is the way that I feel, yes. Yeah. I do feel that mm, sometimes when I have no idea what I'm feeling, mm. and I feel weird, and I, writing is the place I found myself in, ah. yes. Is that the case for you? Yeah, or or watching The Good Wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But that's so that funny. That works. This is so good that you mentioned that. And we're going to open up for questions in a minute. But when you, the other part that I love that I just wanted to make sure the audience noticed was um, visiting yourself. Yes. So um, it's like you count it as a trip, like yes. as part of traveling. And you say to visit yourself, you do something you love or you meditate, keep a diary, take yourself on a date or whatever. Because <laughs> I think again, that's like, we all know when we need to check in and there's so many ways to check out now. And that could be- So you know, many ways to check out, mm -hmm. so many ways. Instagram being one, and I'm oh, yeah. live on Instagram right now. Thank you people <laughs> who are watching. But <laughs> sorry, Instagram for saying this, but Yes, no, uh, and I think we spoke about this too, and it's really interesting because um, as, as a person who is online a lot, of course, and as a person who enjoys Instagram, and a, as a person who uses it as um, an opportunity for work yeah. also, yeah. Um, I think Instagram could be an amazing place, but it's also a really awful place to mm. me. I think everyone in Instagram is pretty, 
everyone is happy, everyone either has a boyfriend or if not, they're super happy being single. I'm so excited <laughs> about being like, girl, no. That is Jennifer. Like, yes. That's Jennifer Aniston again. <laughs> yes. Like, girl, you just called me like three minutes Aww. ago and cried that you hated being single. Aww. And then you have like this amazing quote, like citing Martin Luther King about how <laughs> wonderful being single is. It's like, no, that is not okay. <laughs> And yes, that, that famous Martin Luther King yes, quote. It's, yes, I know. Yeah. It's my favorite Ma Martin Luther King <laughs> quote, too. Being single, so wonderful. <laughs> quote and quotation. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. uh, it's a place where things can get very fake really fast. And I always tell people, like, we should cry in the streets more. Like, you know, we feel like we are, when we feel like crying, we, we either stop crying or we go to like our bathroom to cry. And it's mm. like, no, cry in public. Like people, yeah. like that's the normal thing to do, you know? It, the normal thing to do is not to look like all filtered, like your face yeah. is almost blurry from all the app you use to your face. And... <laughs> It could be, it is aspirational. I think yeah. Instagram is aspirational and I like that part of Instagram and I like the part that we can all connect and it can be amazing, but it can also be a really awful place to create very wrongful narr narratives of, yeah. of yourself and yeah. others. And it's also a really ba bad place for seeing love. I mean, mm -hmm. My girlfriend is here and, you know, everything you see in Instagram, she did it before. And then I'm like, oh, no, wait, I have an idea. So you say this, this and this, <laughs> and then I'm going to, you know, Instagram you. And, yeah. you know, that's prepared. There's a story like uh, uh, like I made a script, yeah. you know, and yeah. although I try to be as uh, no, I, I try to be really honest, but also in the middle, for example, of an anxiety attack, I'm having an anxiety attack. I'm not going to Instagram it because I'm really feeling really bad. Yeah. And when you have a heartbreak also, I'm not telling you like, hey, please upload your videos crying, sobbing <laughs> in <know>. the shower <laughs> while eating ice cream at the same time. I've done it. That's There's no <laughs> shame in that. It's okay to do that. But it's so, it sounds just physically difficult because the water would get into the ice cream. It, mm, yes. You can manage? Yeah, because I usually have the ice cream in my free my refrigerator and it's super yeah. like it's so Oh, uh, it's not so hard. It's yeah, like it Okay. This so did you get yeah, what I is yeah. A good t this is a good This is the kind of valuable information that you're going to find in the book. <laughs> how to <laughs> how, how to, to eat, eat ice cream in the shower? Yes. How to eat ice cream? <laughs> But you know what I was talking about, right? Yeah, yes. Like, yes. You're yes. such a lovely public. Like, we almost communicate, like, telepathically, you know? That's <laughs> There's people here with ice cream under their seats just <laughs> gently, like, oh, no, <laughs> So let's chat to everyone. We're so thrilled that you came out tonight to support Amalia. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you guys if you have any yes. questions at all before any questions i do want to tell you guys something and this is oh. probably the part i'm gonna cry but i think that is okay and <coughs> <laughs> i dreamt a lot of this like mm -hmm. this was my dream to be in this space in this room and it's so crazy it's happening you know and i want to thank you because dreams do come true if you work really hard for them and if everything, this book is going to help you heal hearts, yes. Mm -hmm. But I hope this book gives you the lesson that whatever you are dreaming, you can achieve. Don't let anyone, anyone tell you otherwise. It was a corny dream for me, you know. I wanted to be the first Colombian to be published. I'm not the first, but I'm the fourth, the only alive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to be published in Penguin Books. And as a kid, I asked exactly to be published by Penguin. I didn't want it any other 
Um, the penguin is so beautiful. I mean, <laughs> what can I do as a kid? It looks so pretty. The other <laughs> ones <laughs> don't have as pretty <laughs> logos as you guys have. Uh, so it doesn't matter if your dream is, is big or small. It only matters if it's yours. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, everyone. This I can die happy right now. This is everything. Oh. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, guys. I made you cry. I, I don't know what, like, Netflix should be hiring me. <laughs> like, I made you laugh. I, I'm going to give you food later on. I also made you cry. I'm awesome. <laughs> Wait, what's that? What are those little sweets you gave me backstage? Choco Ramos. Oh, yum. I have some Choco Ramos for you guys. Yes, yeah. They're, they're $25 each. <laughs> they're very small. Yes. But they're worth it. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, they're great. Uh, are you ready for some questions? I am ready, yes. Okay, great, yeah. So Peter's got the, got the mic. Peter, so yes. So hands up, and then when you get the mic, uh, let rip. Do I have like makeup in my? Mm, thank you. If anyone's Instagramming, put a filter. <laughs> <this girl. laughs> thank you. Yes. No, you look great. You look great. Yeah, thank it's perfect. You. Your eyeliner stayed. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thank I am you. From Colombia, from Cali too, and I'm a, a big fan. Viva Cali. Viva Cali. Um, <laughs> mira, eh, wow. <laughs> So my question is, you were talking about how you did research actually for the book, other than just your feelings and stuff. How was yes. the research process for that? Thank you for asking me that question. That is a really important. I'm a huge nerd, and I have realized that I'm always missing being in school, actually. And I'm always telling my agent, who I love, thank you also for making my dream come true. I love you, and Julian, who is so amazing. You guys are going to see him later. Um, <laughs> I'm always telling her I want to go back to school. And I'm lucky enough that I'm traveling so much that I don't have time to go back to school. But then my books are uh, an opportunity to do that. So I do so much research. I go to psychiatrists, psychologists, um, doctors. I go through every, like, I don't know, people who do yoga, people who do meditation, people who were specialists on healing. I went back to my rehab center and I was like, what did you do? I was crying so much. How did you help me? What was the magic behind that? Uh, I read literature a lot. Did I say that word right? Thank you. Yay. Uh, I read uh, so much books and poetry because I think literature is really healing to us. And then I read, I do research probably for maybe two, three, four, eight months. And then I start writing. So yes. And I talk to many people, my friends. Um, my best friend from Colombia is here and she helped me a lot. I called, I called my friends a lot and I was like, what do you do for your heartbreak? What works for you? And yes, thank you. Did I answer that correctly? I'm glad, thank you. Any other questions? You have to ask questions, yes. Yeah, go ahead. This is not optional. <laughs> the doors are locked. <laughs> Nobody can leave. Why did you make the decision to hand write the book? Okay, thank you. That is also an amazing question. Um, look, I, I, my process, my creative process, I handwrite everything. I, I'm not really good with computers. Like, I go to the computer maybe after the, the fifth or seventh page, I have already written by hand, and then maybe I'm super, super inspired, and then I go to the, to the computer. But, like, to me, staring just at the blank, like blinking thing, that is so sterile for me. It doesn't, does it for me. Uh, so it was on. It's like, it's just the way I do it for one thing. And then for the other, I think honesty was re really important. Like, I know, like, I am not the m m Gandhi of heartbreak. You know, like, I am not a super. Uh, specialist uh, person with seven degrees uh, on this. So I needed for you to got 
you guys to feel it was honest and what way in which other way uh could i be really honest and i think it's my handwriting i mean it's just like my bare soul right there i, I think it i was trying to connect with the reader more so the reason why I did that is because. So, do you want to tell? So, so you said you liked when she made mistakes and scratched it out. Yeah. Thank you. So I good. did that. The mis the mistakes, things, and scratching them. It's mm -hmm. part of the whole process. It's exactly how you should be feeling when you are heartbroken. It's like it's okay not to be okay. And you know what? Also, it's very important in the heartbreak process to expect a non-linear process or an emphasis in the word process. Like sometimes we feel better for one month and we're like, oh, I did it, I made it, like I'm out of here. And then for a weekend, you hit a really bad low and then you're like, I'm the worst, I'm never getting out of this. I like, I like, and it's not like that. It's a process, it's, it has ups, downs, and it's okay to make mistakes. I mean, you're probably gonna send that drunk text anyway, so. <laughs> Don't beat yourself too hard on it, you know? That's the whole idea of also keeping the mistakes, like being honest and being kind with yourself. Yes, I think that's what I did. Yeah. I love people in Cali, they're so participative. <laughs> like, I actually paid, no, I didn't pay them. <laughs> okay, yeah. first congratulations again, I'm from Thanks. Cali. And I wanted to ask you, how, like, what do you learn from your book? Like, how did it change my your, li your book, like, how did it change your relationship as it is right now with your, like, with Nella? With Nella. I love how they know who my... <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a really good question. <laughs> I don't know how to respond. You know what? It's really funny because every time I have my heart, mm, I, when I have... Feel, when I feel down in my relationship, when we've been through hard times, or when someone near me, my best friend, has had a ha hard time, we always use the really bad joke. And it's like in the middle, someone, she's crying, like she's being that serious. And then she's like, no, this is really bad. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, hey, you know what? You should really read this book I have read. It's like, <laughs> It's called, I don't know, something like, you always change the love of your life. And she's like, stupid, shut up. It doesn't work for me anymore. And I'm like, oh. But, but as a joke, it works. I think, um, to me, it has taught me to be more compassionate because it's also what a book teaches you. I think that when you, a book is never finished you always feel like you could have done better or you ca could have added an extra chapter or made another joke or do something extra for the book. And I think something really amazing is that publishing a book teaches you that there's a moment when you need to let things go and you need to be good to yourself until maybe this is not a masterpiece. I mean, maybe this is not a Garcia Marquez book, and that is okay, because it was the best I did. Like I gave my everything in this book. And I'm gonna cherish that, and I'm gonna give it to the world. And I think it has taught me that in my own emotional processes. Like I'm gonna be kind with myself. I'm doing everything I can to be better and to be kind to myself and to others. And then I'm gonna let go. So I think that is the, the, the biggest thing I have learned from the book. Thank you for your question, it's amazing. And one back here. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm not from Cali, but I'm from <laughs> Colombia. Hola, Juli. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask about the editing process. The book has everything, it has recipes, but it has quotes and it has illustrations. Is there anything that you decide to not put in, either because it become like it's part of a future project or just because it doesn't belong in there? How do, yeah, how's the editing process? Um, it was amazing. Um, I, like, I don't know, like, like we were talking um, before, I think those 
those very different elements coexist in there because I think it's also like what you do in, in when you have your heartbreak, like you n grab from many things. And I also feel very strongly about the relationship we have with writing and how I think writing like written letters on a blank page are also drawings and how drawings can heal a lot. And I am not saying this because obviously we are in an era where images are very important. We are saturated by images. But I think there's something really therapeutic about drawings and also very naive drawings, which are the kind of drawings I do, not because I want to, but because I have no other talent. <laughs> but it soothes you, like drawing, like reading things where, where there's drawings and it, it connects, and this is, I'm not making this up, it connects you with how you used to relate with books and with information when you were a kid. So it takes you to a really good like therapeutic space where you can like relax. And it happens a lot. People tell me a lot, like they, they start reading the book very stiffened and then by the fifth page they're like, ah, ha, 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 there's some, like, the, okay, laugh, please. <laughs> this is so, <laughs> this is so funny. So I don't know who the, the process was very organic. Uh, Meg and Shannon were the absolute best. Andrea works with me a lot. And I think what was really most important for us and in the translation was looking for maybe references that would also work with um, the US um, population. And I think that was the trick. But to me, it was like writing the whole book again, you know? It was really funny. And also the reason I was so tired like last year, like I was like, what did I do last year? Like, why am I so tired? And then I was like, oh yeah, I wrote two books in a year. I'm <laughs> gonna sleep right now, bye. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, thank you. Got another one back here. Um, hello, my name is Millie. I just want to tell you first that you are my favorite makeup artist through Instagram ever. <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you stand up so we can hear you better? Oh my god. <laughs> you can do that. You don't like to talk in, in front of people. I don't like to. <laughs> okay. Um at some at some point do you feel that you really want to leave the book and why? I didn't hear but I'm At some point did you feel that you want to leave the book? To leave it? To leave like like I don't want to write more or something like that. You're done. With Okay, uh, like, yes, I thank you. That is a really good question. Um, yes and no. Um, it is a book that I wrote in 2015. And so I think, I don't know if this happens to all authors, but sometimes I was like, oh no, that is so 2015. Like, <laughs> I'm in another whole phase right now. Or maybe I'm like, I should have written more about, yes, these romantic notions we have, or we are in a very politized, did I say that correctly, moment right now. So I, I would have probably written more about that, like today. Uh, so sometimes uh, I am like, oh, enough of that. I'm really into writing about anxiety today, but can you ask me about that? But then no, it's a book that has given me everything. I mean, I'm here with this book, I, I love it. And I think you, you asked me or we talked about this a little bit and is how it makes me connect to people, mm -hmm. you know, and how you feel it's like a diary and how people react to that. And it's so crazy, the reaction of people. It's yeah. so amazing. People open up, like when, when I do events, people cry and it's so beautiful, so beautiful. And it happens a lot in Spanish. And yeah. I thought it was because we are Latinos and we cry a lot, you know? I was, I was like, yeah, we're so over the top. And then just the other day, I received an email and guys, this is crazy. This was the moment I was like, okay, I don't know, but I think this, thank you God, this is kind of important because I got an email from a, a Chinese guy who is 86 year old, oh. 65, 68, yes. <laughs> okay, 
Thank you. Yeah, got it. Yeah. 68, yeah, 86. No, he would be dead probably. Okay. 68, and he wrote me an email, and it was like, please help me. I've had a heartbreak for the past 12 years. My wife left me. Thank you for your book. Uh, it saved me from killing myself. I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> like, that's deep. So it's a book that's given me that. Like a guy I don't know who is 68. I was like, what? Like how did, the, like it has drawings on it. Like what? And that is crazy to me. And so I'm so grateful. So yes. Maybe the gap too between, you know, you wrote it in 2015 and then, so you had some time to heal from your own heartbreak. Yes. So now everybody telling you about theirs you're in a better place to listen and to be. Yes, and also, for example, I was, and that is something that happens a lot, and also it, I have learned many other things in, in these years. Mm. Um, I have learned from my privilege, so I also, like, I don't know, like, for example, the book, it, it, we, all, we always use his, hers, like, female and masculine pronouns, and maybe I should have, I, I would have wanted to add another, like they, them, mm. something like that, I think, but I don't know. And maybe in one of the changes, you could dedicate it to me. Yes, definitely. That, nice idea? that would be an That'd amazing be nice idea. idea. You know what is crazy? <laughs> and this met. is true. <laughs> no, you, you know what is crazy? And this is true. One day I started telling people in Colombia, like, oh, you know, when I signed these books, it gives people superpowers, you know? <laughs> and people were like, yeah, I'm like, it's crazy, whatever, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and then I was like talking to people and I was like, what do you want in your life? Tell me, I'm gonna write it in here and it's gonna happen. And they were like, oh, you know, I haven't, I, I'm out of job for five months. Like, can you please put in there that there's gonna be a job for me? And I put it and then she got a job. I was like, okay, I have a power, this is real. <laughs> I, of course it's not a power, I mean, I don't know, it's neuro-linguistic programming maybe. Uh, <laughs> and I started doing this with everyone and they started getting their stuff. So like in my close friend, this is true, this is true. This is not Garcia Marquez stuff, this is true. <laughs> and then like in my close circle of friends, like Nela, Nela oh. receives call all the time, like, hey, Nela, could you get Amalia, sign me a copy with the special superpowers thing? Oh. Thank you. Oh. And I have, yes, wow. it happens. So okay. I'm gonna dedicate it to you with okay. superpowers. Okay, thank and you. And to everyone here. Okay, <laughs> amazing, amazing. So wait, how are we doing for time, Peter? We have time for one or two more. Time for a couple more questions. Oh, you've yeah. been waiting here, yeah. I'm My sorry. editor has one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> maybe it's a spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Mexico and I just want to say thank you because your books are amazing and thank also you. ask you how do you feel today like you've been through all this pain yes and all this heartbreak so how d how does Amalia feels today like my heart or yes, in your general heart, your life your with all these books with being here in New York in strands how do you feel wow I feel like I don't know. I always think, I wish, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really saddened by the fact that there are no Oscars for writers. <laughs> like, I would really like to be here giving a speech in a <laughs> Chanel dress. Like, it's my dream, you know? <laughs> so I'm saddened by that. Like, don't you think? It's like, I love this place, this is my dream come true, but also I want to glam up, you know? I want to, I want to put my finger in the manicure cam with Juliana Rancic, where is that? I don't see it here, you know? Like, I want people asking me stuff. <laughs> so she's The mani petty hand, I want it, where is it? <laughs> Nobody has it. So, I want to say that the Oscar is really heavy, but the microphone is okay. Uh, no, I feel amazing. It's really my, my dream come true. I cannot believe it. I think I'm going to cry a lot after this. 
uh, also because I haven't cried, like, I, like I have been tricking my mind not to think a lot about this. I was like, oh yeah, it's just another day, okay, let's go by. And then I'm gonna realize, and I know I'm gonna start crying a lot, but I feel very full of gratitude. And I don't know, I feel super excited. Ellen is next. You can <laughs> ask me, yes. We're gonna make it there, believe me. <laughs> so. I believe Thank you. you. It's frightening. I think yeah, it's, I yes, know. I think you. I you got her me. You wrote it in a book somewhere, and one day Ellen's gonna wake up. Hey, I need to talk to <laughs> Amalia. Amalia, where is she? <laughs> you should like. I feel so very proud. For example, at the way I showed my superpowers to my editor and to the people at Penguin, I was like, "Boys, I'm different." I've got superpowers. <laughs> and I think the first day they were like, oh, this girl is so funny. Yeah. And then Alison is here. Where is Alison? I made, I made her cry too. The, do you, Alison, please raise your hand. Do you remember that? Do you remember that meeting where I told you I was going to be on Ellen? Do you still trust me? <laughs> See? <laughs> told you guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. It, it means a lot to me. And thank you for that question. Thank you. So, so we'll do two more. I just don't want to neglect this side of the room. Yes, thank you. I was wondering if you could talk about the literary influences of Beyonce on your work. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <coughs> this is a um, very important question. Thank you very much. Uh, Beyonce has influenced me totally in, in every... Uh <laughs> I love this guy. Thank you. <laughs> Can we hire you to every event I attend? <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna, my, my editor is going to contact you later. <laughs> um, she's amazing. I mean, I read this uh, review they did on my book, and it was really good. And the girl who made the review said, Amalia Andrade says she wants to be the Beyonce of book and also the Adele of book, which I think it's a lot. And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's right, I mean, maybe that wasn't such a good line to pick up. But then, you know, Beyonce wasn't built in a day, and I think that's where I want. <laughs> the, yes, yes, and that's where I want to go. I always tell you guys, and I, this was also a, a high moment from that meeting, Alison was there, and I had recently watched the Coachella presentation of Beyonce. We have discussed this very, like, it's basically all we talk about. Mm. Meg and I, we talk about the book, and then we talk about <laughs> Beyonce in Coachella, but I don't, have you guys seen it? Yes? It was, yes, 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 J Balvin was there, yes. <laughs> Colombian power, and <laughs> what I saw was this person, this creative person with a window of opportunity. And what she did to me, and when I say I want to be the Beyonce of books, I don't mean like I want to be super, re of course I want everything anyway. Uh, <laughs> but what I mean, what <laughs> I truly do mean is, uh, this is a person who has a window of opportunity and she wants to do the best possible. She wants to make sure that the audience gets the absolute best of her. And that's exactly the way I want you guys to feel. Like I am here and I am going to give you my 11, no my 11, no my 111 <laughs> person. Like I want to give it, a, yes, I'm so sorry, not my 11, stop laughing. Um, <laughs> I want to give everything, and that's what I, I mean. She has influenced me. She's the best. She's a really great songwriter, too, who run the world, girls. I mean, that's almost better than the Odyssey, you know? <laughs> who run the world, girls. Who Like, all the lyric is just that. <laughs> I mean, that is an, a great accomplishment. No, I'm kidding. She do is amazing. She's yeah. a great performer. She, I think she's an artist. She's a really powerful artist that I admire a lot. So thank you. Got one last question right over here. Hi, Hi Amalia. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. <laughs> Hi again. I'm great. Okay. Um, well, I think that everyone who read, and I have to admit, I didn't finish to read the book. Okay. This book just came to my hands one week ago. Wow. Uh, some friend of mine from Bogota sent it to me. Okay. Because she wanna read. 
that I read it. Like, she loved you, and she's been, like, in all the meetings that you did in Bogota. So this question is going to be for me and for her because okay. it's something personal. Okay. Okay. We know the uh, healing is no linear, you know? Yes. It's something crazy, like going down. And about I read you but is like <coughs> this happened this heartbreak that you had was like very deep, very like emotional, something that really like touched you and um my question is is for me and for her. Okay. Um how long took you like heal completely? and feel ready again to love because we know that you have a girlfriend yes and um yeah mostly girls here i think that they read because they are heartbreaking too okay. and everyone knows that every person have a process and it's a personal process yes but you personal you share with us that it was really really hard for you yes so I just want to know how hard how hard it was it was for you and how long take you for you like it took a lot actually it took maybe two years it wasn't a short thing and i always tell people it might last seven days i mean taylor swift is pretty yeah no but yes taylor i admire her because she's like you know love is not something or being heartbroken is not like being in quarantine, it, is that correctly? Quarantine is like, you don't have to stay in like celibacy for seven months, so people think it's okay for you to date again. I mean, only you know your own personal times and that it's okay. To me, it was a hard thing, it lasted a long, and I think some heartbreaks are so deep, they keep like even if you heal and you're in love with another person you have like these remainings um uh, of that experience um and it's the reason and that happens because i think we have no idea how to love i think we know many things in life but love is not something we master why is that i think we learn to love like we have ed sentimental educations uh, that come from how we see love in our very first environment, our families, how we see love in our cultural environments. I mean, maybe Irish love can be different from Colombian love, but still is love. That is amazing. It has something in common or US love. Um, and also uh, we learn to love from you know movies, songs uh so for example me personally i learned to love from the little mermaid and that is very yes <laughs> that's so ironic why because she gives up her voice yes. to be with the person and your whole thing is finding your voice again wow isn't it after you lose the person yes that it, can we use this in an article thank you you're the best. No, uh, and yes, thank you. Wow, my ha my heart, my head is going like pfft, right now. But anyway, yes, I learned from love. I, I learned how to love from a girl who gives up her biggest talent in order to go chase a guy she has barely talked to, and she gives up everything. She gives up her family. I mean, she's a princess. Yeah. She has ever. She gives up economic stability, <laughs> you know? I wouldn't give that for anything in the world. <laughs> she hasn't w has to work one day in her life and she gave that up. Um, and it's very funny, ha ha ha. But really, yeah. that's what we watch as kids. That's like, oh, it's totally normal, you know, to stop being myself and, you know, accommodate myself in order to like others more. That is something that girls do so much. As kids, we are taught to accommodate ourselves in order to be more likable to other people. That is so wrong. And just there, we learn like love is conditional, for example. And it can go on and on and on. And I think 
I already forgot what the question was, but <laughs> well, she anyway, you know, I think how how long, it? How long it was, yeah. yes, and so <laughs> it was. It took me almost two years. It was very hard. Some things I'm dealing with today. Today I'm still dealing with things. I was like, oh, maybe she hurt me in that sense, and I'm still struggling with that. Um, and I think it's something. It it doesn't have a a uh, time lapse exactly. I think it can last how many months, years, days, hours it has to last as as long as you're honest with yourself and you allow yourself to go through the process, it's gonna get better if you do that, I think. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. Sort of. Well, um, I think that's all we have time for. I love any closing comments from you, but I want to say, you know, we hate hearing about this pain that you went through, but it's good for all of us because <laughs> now we have this beautiful roadmap and also that you're doing brilliantly now as well. And so thank you for your generosity and for your art and for coming to visit us here. The city is very lucky to have you tonight, thank Amalia. You. So thank you, everybody. For putting it that voice. I am. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank. Okay, you can keep. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It was an honor to have you. I mean, you are everything. Hey, guys. Look, I promised her something, and please don't make me look bad, okay? We are Colombian, we are Latin American people, we are Central American people, raise your hands. Yes, so I made her this promise, and it's really important. Her book, my God, it's amazing. It's dangerous, yes, look, she has it. Oh, thank Look, you. it's starting to happen. Thank you very thank much, you. that's so lovely, yeah. <laughs> please get it, it made me laugh. It's so brilliant. It's also it's so generous. earnest and honest and it's something you will want to have. Like my book is good, but if you buy the combo, I'm you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna achieve great places. So please do. Uh, and as a Colum I told her we Colombians, we like we threaten each other. Like yeah, she do it do it. <laughs> so don't make me look bad. Thank okay. you. Come and see, uh, come and see Amalia signing books at the top. Thank you, everybody, so much. Thanks to the Strand for hosting us here. Yes, thank you, yeah, thank, thank you, you. Thank so, you so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Please keep it going for Amalia and Mary. Yeah.